Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. A little departure from my uh, usual techniques uh, using glossy paper and uh, dye based inks. Just wanted to do a real simple composition using um, kind of a neutral uh, value paper. This one's a kind of a pre made folded card by the name of, um, I think, a brown bag or something like that. And uh, it's a matte paper, um, lunch bag is what it's called, sorry. And uh, just real natural fibers. I just wanted to do a real simple composition here, monochromatic using uh, brown. Kind of now I think about it, it would be kind of interesting if I used uh, kind of like a brownish tone for the uh, images in here. But I uh, wanted to spend most of my time doing the embellishments with something like a white gel pen to represent snow on the branches of the uh, three bare trees. So, um, one, two, three, four images on here. Composition probably took, you know, less than five minutes, and then just spent most of my time with the white gel pen. Used a little bit of the color box pigment ink for a little bit of fog effects in here. Uh, you know, not a great, uh, I don't know, finish on here. Like I said, it was just kind of a little experiment, but it was a lot of fun to do and uh, kind of to watch the uh, the neutral background uh, transform, um, or the scene transform with the use of uh, lighter types of finishes on, you know, an otherwise just uh, completely um, flat uh, composition. So anyways, like I say in the video, I think, uh, I don't know, I'll experiment around a little bit more, figure out some other compositions and things like that, and uh, maybe kind of play around with this idea of the, uh, you know, the uh, kind of neutral um, valued background um, and just going with uh, you know your darks and lights on it too so but anyways like I said uh, maybe that sepia looking uh, type of ink would be uh, kind of interesting to use on uh, you know this kind of a uh, card and using this type of technique so anyways um, hope you enjoy the uh, process if you decide to watch it and like I said, just a little experiment here. Okay. Okay, let's try a little experiment today. Um, I have a piece of, uh, well, it's just kind of a folded card. Um, and the, uh, the type of uh, card stock that it is is uh, just a real raw, looking natural um, paper or fiber and uh, the name of this uh, card is called lunch bag so you, you can get, kind of get an idea of uh, what color we're talking about it's fairly thick it's probably like a 10 point thickness on this card but um, anyways I mean the real specifics of this um, cardstock isn't really important the important thing is that I'm starting with a, oh, I would say it's like a 40 to 50% um, kind of shade, you know, in terms of uh, light to dark. Um, it's going to be a real simplistic um, color scheme, and then I'm just going to be using uh, black and uh, going back into it with uh, some white gel pens. Maybe I'll use a little bit of uh, pigment ink as well, I don't know. But this is just like um, doing one of those little really fun and effective exercises where you do, um, you start off with a, a mid-tone and um, you work your, um, kind of your, your darker tones and your light tones over that more neutral um, gray tone in terms of uh, value. Okay, it could be any color. This one's more of a warm brown, but um, 
uh, kind of starting from that midway point, instead of always starting with a white piece of paper, you can start with those mid-tones and then go into it with uh, things like uh, pastels, Conte crayons, uh, etc. Uh, white colored pencils work great. Okay, now I'm working on this. Like I said, this just happens to be a, a folded card that I uh, purchased, um, you know, in that incarnation. Uh, let's see, let's stamp this. This is the uh, Three Bear Trees stamp. And let's go, let's kind of self contain this image. In other words, I'm not kind of having it run off the page this time around. Let's work within the format of the card, kind of addressing the edges by not going into them like I usually do. Um, because on this one I'm not going to do a vignette to really contain the composition. Okay, there's the trees. And I have this little buck or doe. I'm going to have it kind of the point of that um, gel pen is to kind of make it look like um, there's going to be some snowfall on the ground. So, what I'm doing is I'm wiping off the bottom of the feet of this. Um, image and uh, hmm. kind of had an idea of where I wanted this to go but now that I stamped this out I'm not really quite sure I think I want it over here a little bit kind of semi the rule of thirds Okay, now let's add in some additional texture in the form of these tiny rocks. Okay. And put some in the foreground like that. and peel on my um, acrylic block, which allows me to put the raw rubber uh, dye uh, onto it for the temporary mount. I do something else. It doesn't really matter there, but I kind of stamped out that one upside down. Oh well. Okay, get a little texturing down here. You can go for the second impression as well to get lighter toned impressions as well. In fact, I kind of like that. Kind of lighter impressions in the uh, distance. Okay, kind of a little composition like so. Now, hopefully we can kind of bring it to life a little bit more with the use of highlights. Always replace your um, kind of protective little plastic sheet, you know, the little covering that comes with the tack and peel. Uh, replace it on your block when this is not in use because if this touches anything like you know, a paper towel or something, it is really hard to break, take it off. You know, you can always wash it off if there's, you know, dust or anything on it, but... Okay, now let's see if we can add in some snow. Let's see if this even shows up. Sometimes I wasn't really quite sure if this uh, white would show up on this colored paper or not. Um, yeah, and it does. You know, there's not a huge amount of contrast between that and the background. I, I guess that's just enough, though. You can see that kind of uh, area like that.
like that. Um, kind of just, I'm not going to outline every single thing, but I might, I might do it on a fair um, uh, number of these branches. It looks pretty interesting, and these little highlights are really fun to add to uh, into a scene. Uh, not always just glossy cardstock, of course, but if you're using white, um, just always have to remember that the background has to be, um, you know, dark enough to where it's it's visible. See that those branches right there. Kind of looks a little bit more wintry, huh? I could have given this area right here a little bit of a darker impression. I should have used more pressure there, but oh well. The uh, the pen will help define some of those areas in there nicely. Um, this pen happens to be a Pilot Choose point seven um, millimeter. Um, ball. Kind of in these little um, Y points. I don't know, that's the only way I can describe it. Uh, I give a little bit more like uh, some additional snow has kind of built up in that little area right there right in those corners like that, or intersections. It's kind of strange not doing a uh, you know scene with just layers and layers of ink like I normally do. But just getting into some other kind of techniques um, and uh, you know just kind of experimenting was one of the things that I really wanted to uh, get to uh, this year. It's kind of one of those things I have to kind of force myself to, uh, you know, to to get in these other, get into these other looks. It's like uh, going to a restaurant or something like that, and always kind of ordering the same thing. You know, it's like it with my uh, color schemes. I mean, I can come up with you know different looks based on what color scheme I'm working with and kind of the strokes that you use and all that. But uh, you know. So I always want my scenes to uh, kind of move in a certain direction. I'm having fun doing this, though. I love working with this white pen. So this is a kind of a different look. It's a real different texture too, of course. You know, this is a you know it's a matte paper, and I'm always used to working on glossy. But I sure like the look of this tree, though. If I added this much white to, you know, one of my typical scenes, it would probably be too much. But this, it's, uh, I don't know, I guess with the texture of the paper and the, uh, and the value of it um, not being so dark, um, the white um, doesn't stand out so much. Okay, let's see. Let's make some of these little clumps of snow on some of these branches a little bit uh, thicker, 
just so we get a little bit of more of a variety. Kind of a, a little bit more of a variety of line, I guess you can say. Otherwise, what it ends up looking like too much, it's just like a kind of loud texture if it's all the same. So see some of these areas I'm kind of adding a little bit more, like thicker areas, like maybe if there's a bigger branch, or like right in here, this could stand to use a, you know, a nice big glob of uh, snow right down at the base maybe where a lot of snow is built up, but if it was doing that on one of the branches, the branches would bow and snow would fall off, so. Okay. There we go right there. Um, that alone really stands out um, too much though, doesn't it? So, see down here, why don't we bring in some of these, uh, these rocks, as if some of these rocks covered in snow. Like maybe the larger ones. Or smaller ones too, I guess you can say. You don't have to put it on all of them. Maybe that would be too monotonous anyway. of the, uh, the rock itself and just kind of coloring half of it on the top with uh, the white gel. Okay. I wonder what that white pigment would look like. Let's, let's give it a shot. Um, No better way to find out than to try it out, huh? <laughs> what I'm usually saying on uh, the uh, the glossy papers, if you don't like, you know, that white paint that you put down, you know, you can always buff it off because it's, you know, the uh, glossy paper is sealed, but this is not, so kind of whatever I put down there, you know, that's it. Um, kind of might be stuck with it, uh, you know, on matte paper. So that being said, I really inked this up and I've dabbed a lot of it off. I've kind of smashed, you can see how, um, kind of sm sorry, smash this tip is, it's really flat now. Okay. And, uh, you know, the less that comes off the tip, um, the easier it is to control. I mean, you don't want it to wear, you know, nothing is coming off, of course, but um, if you kind of blot off a lot of it to wear, um, you know, it takes a few taps to kind of have anything really visible on your paper, then you can imagine just how much control you have over it. What happens is a lot of times people get kind of impatient because you put a couple dabs down and barely anything is showing, so they go, you know, they ink it up harder and they do this and there's big, huge, thick blobs of ink everywhere, you know, which is really not what you want, um, right? So, this is very much like dry brushing, you know, something on 
except instead of using paintbrush, you're using cotton swab. But kind of think of it like that, you know, the dry brushing technique. I'll put the little dough in a little bit of fog as well. Some of these rocks. A little bit of uh, fog in the background. How about in the foreground too? Let's uh, have some of these foreground rocks kind of oscillate a little bit between um, I was going to say, I don't know, light and dark, I guess. Kind of in fog and out of fog. Soft and crisp. I mean, this is very subtle. I, I hope it's showing on this. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking through the uh, screen. I guess it kind of shows. Um, Okay, but it's missing something, isn't it? I think I know what it is. Alright. Let's see. Let me fold that over so I have a better idea of the composition. Okay, we need a, something to kind of unify, I think, the whole composition. And let's do this. Um, I'm going to have snowfall coming in to this card, this composition, in the form of little white um, snowballs, um, in this case gel pen dots. So it's kind of like running a texture over everything, don't forget to you know, have it kind of falling on your trees, um, in front of some branches, you know, draw right over the top of a, you know, a, a branch. And let's see how this goes. You know, vary your size of your snowballs every now and then. Have some small ones. Some of them I have kind of trailing off, like a, I don't know, Charlie Brown cartoon or something like that, with those little snowballs. The larger the snowball falling, maybe um, in terms of uh, the scene, the closer it would be to the viewer's eye. Yeah, it's kind of coming together a little bit, I guess. And this is my kind of first little experiment with this type of thing. Uh, yeah, I could use a little bit of work, but um, I think this uh, I don't know, warrants uh, further um, experiments. I'll have to uh, think about um, kind of some compositions that might uh, be really uh, good for this technique or kind of method. You can use a little bit more like a base or something like that, little patches of snow, I think, or lighter areas maybe, perhaps. A little bit of snow texture down below, maybe. Kind of 
this isn't supposed to be snow on this uh, dough, but just to kind of put a little highlight on it. Okay, a little bit monotonous with the size of the snowball. Let me make some that are even larger. Um, These, this variation all of a sudden just kind of serves as texture, too. And I'm not going for realism either, so... I mean, obviously not with this type of composition, but just having those larger balls in there, it's like little balls of light. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit too uniform in terms of my placement. I need to give a little bit more variation in terms of my dots. Everything was kind of too uniformly spread. I think it looks kind of strange that way. So group some, you know, I have little groupings here and there. I was going overboard, but I think I like it more with more of these dots um, in the scene. some of these little balls kind of glowing a little bit. It's not supposed to really represent anything like, you know, something that's normally lit or anything like that. I just want to, I just want to make some of them a little bit more, I guess, textured. Texture for texture's sake. Why? And thus for visual interest's sake. I just, I don't know. It brings variation. You see those that are, they're kind of glowing now. A little bit more. I think it makes things look a little bit more interesting. Texture uh, in the scene. Okay, um, I guess that's about it. Kind of a fun little experiment. Uh, like I said, I can have little patches of snow or something down below. That'd be kind of nice. Should I do that? Um, hmm. snow, could be a little patch of ice or something like that. It's kind of scumbling a little bit. I think that was the term.
gives a little base to the tree, I guess. Almost looks like colored pencil, like white colored pencil or something like that. All right, let's add a little bit more of this soft mist around here. Making these little bands of uh, kind of mist here. on uh, some other types of compositions as well. Kind of blending in some of this a little bit. Little bit. Kind of a little scumbling gel pen area. Kind of needs a little, maybe like a word stamp or something, doesn't it? Be kind of good. I don't know, it's fun like this could make a, like a Christmas card too. But anyways. Okay, um, you can make a card out of it this time around. It's already in card format, so. Um, matte paper, kind of a neutral um, value. Simple composition, simple stamping, and uh, I don't know, kind of all about the flourishes in terms of the highlights and uh, textures added in. Um, to an otherwise very uh, flat scene. So, um, I don't know, like I said, it was uh, really fun to do, and I'll have to try it uh, with some other types of imagery as well. Okay, anyways, I hope you enjoyed uh, kind of the process there, and uh, thanks for watching.